Dear students, welcome to Creative Educational Idea. Today we shall elaborately discuss on Geoffrey Chaucer. So Geoffrey Chaucer, he is called the father of English literature, as well as the father of English poetry. He was explicated as the father of English poetry by John Dryden. So Geoffrey Chaucer. He is a poet, author, as well as a civil servant. So, he is best known for his creation, the Canterbury Tales. Understood? He was the first writer to be buried in what has since come to be called Poets' Corner in Westminster Abbey. Dear students, take a glance. Where Geoffrey Chaucer was born? He was born in London in United Kingdom. Understood? Take a glance on when did he pass away? He passed away on 25 October in 1400. Understood? So, if we are talking about his wife was Philip Wright. She was born in 1366 and passed away in 1387. Let's know about Geoffrey Chaucer's children. They are Thomas Chaucer, Louis Chaucer, Agnes Chaucer, Ajulaj, Elizabeth Chaucer. So definitely dear students, Geoffrey Chaucer was influenced by William Shakespeare Alfred Tennyson, first Baron Tennyson, as well as Karl Marx. So today we shall exclusively talk over about Geoffrey Chaucer. So which questions will come in your SSB examination? So without wasting time, let's talk over some indispensable questions on Geoffrey Chaucer. Between which sets of dead did Chaucer live? So Chaucer was born in 1340 and he passed away in 1400. Geoffrey Chaucer, he said uh, he was born in 1340 and passed away in 1400. Take a glance on question number two. Chaucer lived during the reigns of Edward III, Richard II, as well as Henry V. So, dear students, can you tell me the creations which creations we are? Edward III, Richard II and Henry V. So some historical creations were also created by a greatest poet of English literature, which is William Shakespeare. Understood? Which William Shakespeare? He is the bard of Avon. Why? Because he was born on the bank of the Stratford, on the bank of the Avon River, and there was a village which name was Stratford. So William Shakespeare is called the Bard of Avon. Bard of Avon. Let's go to the next point. Which of the following was the closest contemporary of Chaucer? So William Langland. Let's know why. William Langland, he was the one of the greatest example of Middle English period. If we are talking about William Langland, he was one of the greatest example of Middle English period. Who? William Langland. And he was born in 1330 and passed away in 1400. Understood? 
Mainly he is known for his pious plowman. He is known for his pious plowman. Let's go to the next point. Who called Chaucer the father of English poetry? John Dryden, which I have already explicated a few minutes before. Who called Chaucer the father of English poetry? John Dryden. Let's know about Matthew Arnold. Arnold, who was Matthew Arnold? He is also an English poet and a cultural critic. Understood? Matthew Arnold was also an English poet as well as a cultural critic. And he was born on 24 December 1822 and passed away in, on 15 April 1888. Understood? Who? Arnold. If we are talking about Spencer, who is known as the poet's poet. Who is called the poet's poet? Spencer. Understood? Poet's poet. Who described Chaucer as the well of English? Spencer. Who is known as the poet's poet. He described Chaucer as the well of English on the field. Understood? Let's go to the next point. With Chaucer is born our real poetry. Who holds this view? I have already told you about Matthew Arnold. He was an English poet as well as a cultural critic who? Matthew Arnold. He was born on 24th December in 1822 and passed away on 15 April in 1888. Matthew Arnold, he was an English poet as well as a cultural critic. Chaucer found his native tongue, a dialect, and left it a language, who makes this observation. Chaucer found his native tongue, a dialect, and left it a language, who makes this observation. This correct option is option A, Loge. Chaucer found his native tongue, a dialect, and left it language, and that person, Loge, who is known as Loge, makes this object made this observation one second let's know about matthew arnold chaucer is the earliest of the greatest modern it was the view of matthew arnold chaucer is the earliest of the greatest moderns It was explicated by Matthew Arnold. If Chaucer is the father of English poetry, he is the grandfather of English novel. Who made this remark? This remark was made by G.K. Chesterton. Understood? If Chaucer is the father of English poetry, he is the grandfather of English novel. This remark was made by G.K. Chesterton. Let's take a glance on the next point. Who says about Chaucer's characters? Here, God's plenty. And he also told, who he also called to Chaucer, the father of English poetry, John Dryden. John Dryden says about Chaucer's characters, here is God's plenty. In which month did Chaucer's pilgrims go on their pilgrimage? Which I have already told you, April. In the month of April, Chaucer's pilgrims had gone their pilgrimage. So let's know how many pilgrims had 
participated how many pilgrims had gone in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales so 29 in Chaucer Canterbury Tales there are 29 pilgrims we are going on the pilgrimage understood let's know next point how many pilgrims in the prologue to the canterbury tales represent the knighthood class three understood three pilgrims in the prologue prologue what is the meaning of prologue introduction time introduction part at the beginning and its antonym is epilogue understood so how many pilgrims in the prologue to the canterbury tales represent the knighthood class three the correct option is three take a glance on the question number 14 how many ecclesiastical which means spiritual ecclesiastical which means spiritual how many ecclesiastical characters are portrayed in the prologue eight understood eight let's go to the next point so if we are talking about how many women characters figure in the prologue to the Canterbury Tales during the starting point during the beginning of the Canterbury Tales how many women characters figure three let's know about question number 16 it is believed that the host at the inn was a real man what is the name of that host it is believed that the host at the inn was a real man. What is the name of the host? The correct option is Harry Belly. Harry Belly. Take a glance on the question number 17. What is the name of the inn where pilgrims assembled? Assembled, got together. So, what is the name of the inn where all the pilgrims got together for the night? that was tabard inn understood if the question will come in the exam what was the name of the inn where all the pilgrims all the pilgrims got together assembled for the for, for the night that that inn was tabard inn understood tabard inn then come to the next to which shrine shrine means small temple to which shrine are the pilgrim pilgrims going Shrine of St. Thomas Beckett in Canterbury. The students take a glance on this point. To which shrine are the pilgrims going? Shrine of St. Thomas a Beckett at Canterbury. Let's go to the next point. Take a glance on the question number 19. One of the tales in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales is in prose. Which of the following? One of the tales in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales is in prose. Which of the following? The correct option is option A. The Parson's Tale. The Parson's Tale. Let's go to the next. One of the portrait in the prologue is that of the wife of Bath. What is Bath? One of the portraits in the prologue is that of the wife of Bath. So Bath, this is the name of the town to which she belonged. The name of the town which she belonged. This is known as Bath. He was as fresh as the month of May. He was as fresh as the month of May. This line occurs in the prologue. Whom does this line? Sorry, whom does this line be referred to? Square. 
this line refers to square then take a glance on question number 22 one of the following works is not a work of chaucer which one which one of the following work is not a work of chaucer so dear students the house of Roach, it was also written, written by Chaucer. The Legend of Good Omen, it was also written by Geoffrey Chaucer. The House of Fame, it was also written by Geoffrey Chaucer. But The Owl and the Nightingale, it was not written by Geoffrey Chaucer. Let's go to the next. Which of the following is Chaucer's prose work? Which of the following is Chaucer's prose work? He is the father of English poetry and as well as the grandfather of English novel. And which of the following is Chaucer's prose work? Treatise on the Astrolabe. Treatise on the Astrolabe is Chaucer's prose work. Take a glance on question number 24. Which of the following poets wrote a famous poem? Mourning the death of Chaucer. So while Chaucer passed away after that, he mourned a lot and he composed a poem on, Je on the death of Geoffrey Chaucer. Who is that poet? He is a cleave in the governal of Princess William Ockleave Ockleave in the governor of princes. Let's go to the next. Chaucer was not indebted for his sources to one of the following. Chaucer was not indebted for his sources to one of the following. It was explicated by Homer. Chaucer was not indebted for his sources to one of the following. It was explicated by Homer. Then question number 26. In which tale Chaucer's daughter is killed by her father? In Geoffrey Chaucer's creation, the physician tale. A daughter was killed by her father. Physician tale. The students mug up it. In Geoffrey Chaucer's physician tale, a daughter was killed by her father. Chaucer's a based in a pot on a notable French sermon of Friary, Friar Lawrence. Chaucer. Dias is based on a notable French sermon of Friar Lawrence. This is Parson Stills. This is Parson Stills, which is based on the part on a notable French sermon of Friar Lawrence. Who has been called the Morning Star of Rensa? Geoffrey Chaucer is called. The morning star of Rensa. Geoffrey Chaucer is called the morning star of Rensa. Let's go to the next. Which work of Chaucer was an allegory on the death of Blank, the life of his patron, the book of Duchess? Understood? The book of Duchess. The book of Duchess was an allegory on the death of Blank. And the life of pattern, the book of Duchess. The book of Duchess was an allegory which was written on the death of Blanc, the wife of his pattern. Then, which of Chaucer's work has the Trojan War as its background? Which of Chaucer's work has the Trojan War 
as its background. The correct option is Troilus and Crusade. Troilus and Crusade. Chaucer's work has the Trojan War as its background. Pandya, who is a Chaucerian character, appears in Troilus and Crusade. So this character Pandya, it was appeared in Troilus and Crusade. Let's go to the next. I have already explicated this character. He was as fresh as the month of May. This line occur appears in the prologue. Who does this line refer to? It was referred to square. The next. Which of the following tales in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales is in prose? Which of the following tales in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales is in prose? This is the Parson's Tale. This is the Parson Tales. Next, he found English a dialect and left it English. Here he stands for this sentence was explicated by John Dryden to Geoffrey Chaucer. Understood? This sentence was explicated by John Dryden to Geoffrey Chaucer. Take a glance on this question again. He found English a dialect and left it language. It was explicated by John Dryden to Geoffrey Chaucer. Let's go to the next. Which work of Chaucer bears a close resemblance to Dante's Divine Comedy? Which work of Chaucer bears a close resemblance to Dante's Divine Comedy? The correct option is the house of fame the house of fame bears a close resemblance to dante's divine comedy next question in which work of chaucer has first used the heroic couplet in which work of chaucer has first used the heroic couplet this is the legend of the good omen the legend of the good woman has first used the heroic couplet by Chaucer. Question number 37. Which work of Chaucer entitled him to come of being called the father of English poetry? Which work of Chaucer entitled him that the calm of being called the father of English poetry? This is Canterbury Tales. Question number 38. The wife of both was a deaf. Take a glance on the next. In non person still, the poor widow had three sons. In Nuns Parsons tells, the poor widow had three sons. In the first line of the prologue, which month has been referred as referred by Chaucer? April. In the first line of prologue, April has been referred by Chaucer. In the prologue, which character is fond of hunting and riding? Monk. Monk in the prologue by Chaucer. The character Monk is fond of hunting as well as riding. Then, which of Chaucer works celebrate St. Valentine's Day? Though St. Valentine's Day was celebrated by the Parliament of Poles, which works of Chaucer celebrates 
सेंट वैलेंटाइन डे द करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज द पार्लियामेंट ऑफ फोल्स टेक अ ग्लांस ऑन द क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी थ्री द क्रोलेस एंड क्रिसेड द ट्रोलेस एंड क्रिसेड इट वॉज रिटर्न बाई जियो ब्रिज सर द ट्रोलेस एंड क्रिसेड द लाइफ स्पैन ऑफ चर्सर इज थर्टीन हंड्रेड फोर्टी टू फोर्टीन हंड्रेड चर्सर हेड नॉन फोर लैंग्वेजेस अंडरस्टूड एंड हुई आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड दैट चर्सर ही वॉज एन इंग्लिश पॉइट ऑथर आज वाला जो सिविल सर्वांट एंड ही वॉज बेस्ट नॉन फॉर हिज क्रिएशन कंटरबरी टेल्स अंडरस्टूड एंड ऑन द अदर हैंड He is also known as the father of English poetry, Geoffrey Chaucer. He was the first writer to be buried in what was since understood in Westminster Abbey. Then, the verse of Canterbury Tales consists of rhymed couples. Understood. The Canterbury Tales consists of rhymed couples. I am repeating that question. Which question I have already discussed? How many pilgrims are going on the pilgrimage in the Chaucer Canterbury Tales? Twenty nine. Understood. Twenty nine. Where did they stay? They stay in Tabard Inn. Tabard. Tabard Inn. Let's go to the next. The hundred years war fought between England as well as France. The hundred years war fought between England and France. Beowulf is the most important Anglo-Saxon literary work. Beowulf is the most important Anglo-Saxon literary work. This is an epic. This is an epic. In which century did Norman conquest take place? Eleventh century. Let's go to the next. The War of Roses figures in the work of Shakespeare. So I'm just talking about a little on William Shakespeare. He was born in 1564 at Stratford upon Avon. Understood? So Shakespeare is called the Bard of Avon. Avon. This is the name of a river which was nearby the Stratford. And the Stratford is a village where Shakespeare was born. And Stratford was located on the bank of Avon. Understood? Shakespeare. He in his lifetime he had written one hundred fifty four sonnets and thirty seven plays. Understood? So William Shakespeare. He passed away in sixteen hundred sixteen. He had three children: Susanna, Judith, and Hamnet. And his wife name was Anne Hathaway. Understood? William Shakespeare. Let's go to the next. Who of the following is called the morning star of reformation? And those who are following the, him, they are known as lollards. Understood? I'm just talking about John Wycliffe. He is called the morning star of the reformation, and those who are following him, they are known as lollards. And he is the first person who translated Bible. Who oh, John Wycliffe? Question number fifty-two. How many pilgrims in the prologue to Canterbury Tales represents the military procession? Three. Three pilgrims. In the prologue to Canterbury Tales, represents the military profession. Then take a glance on question number fifty-three. How many 
ecclesiastical which is known as ecclesiastical ecclesiastical which means spiritual how many spiritual characters are portrayed in the prologue eight understood let's go to the next what is the name of the inn so which i have already discussed where the pilgrims pilgrims assembled all the pilgrims stayed put up which i have already told tabard inn then which of the four chief dialects that flourished in the flourish means developed which of the four chief dialects that flourished in pre chasrian period became standard english in chasrian time this is east midland let's go to the next he found english a dialect and left it a language it was explicated by lords then let's go to the next which of the following poem of chaucer is considered the first novel in english this is troilus and cressid it was considered as the first novel in english by geoffrey chaucer troilus and cressid then come to question number 58 there is something common between boccaccio's filistrato and chaucer's there is something common between boccaccio's filistrato's and boccaccio's it has explicated in trilus and cressid let's go to the next which of the following tales of chaucer deals with the chivalric romance of plalson and archite this is the night tale this is the night tale let's go to question number 60 chaucer was called the earliest of the great modern chaucer was called the earliest of great modern the morning star of prensa who initiates these remarks albert albert who albert then come to the next which of the following words of chaucer presents the picture of strong united nation which of the following works of chaucer presents the picture of a strong united nation this is canterbury tales what we are talking about what we are talking about this is canterbury tales how many tales to be told by pilgrimage four tales understood four then come to the next where is the tomb of saint situated canterbury amor vincent amnia amor vincent amnia in chaucer's prologue which means love conquer all so there was a phrase which uh, is used in chaucer's pro prologue amor vincent amnia which means love conquer all love conquer all let's go to the next which of the following tale is in prose this is parson's tale this is parson still then who is known as the connecting line between chaucer and spencer this is thomas sackville thomas sackville and nicholas sackville who is they had written gorbodok they had written gorbodok who is known as the connecting link between chaucer and spencer this is thomas sackville then come to question number 67 the work of wait and sorry the work of wait and sorry were published in totals miscellany in 
देन कम टू क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी एट द फर्स्ट इंग्लिश प्ले हाउस कॉल्ड द थिएटर द फर्स्ट इंग्लिश लाइक द फर्स्ट पिक्चर स्क्यू नॉवल दैट वाज अनफॉर्चुनेट ट्रैवल व्हिच वाज रिटन बाय थॉमस नास थॉमस नास थॉमस नास बट टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द फर्स्ट इंग्लिश प्ले हाउस दिस इज द थिएटर व्हिच वाज फाउंड इन 1576 एंड द पिक्चर स्क्यू नॉवल अनफॉर्चुनेट ट्रैवल व्हिच वाज रिटन आर फर्स्ट पिक्चर स्क्यू नॉवल वाज द अनफॉर्चुनेट ट्रैवलर व्हिच वाज रिटन बाय थॉमस नास He is the father of picture skew novel. Then question number sixty nine, which I was talking about a little bit, ah uh, before, Garbadag, the first regular comedy. In English, it was written by Sackville and Norton, Thomas Sackville as well as Thomas Norton. They had written the first regular comedy, which is called Garbadag. then come to the next when we are theater closed in england in 1642 or stood in 1642 after that reopened in 1660 in 1642 the theaters were closed in england When did the Great Fire of London take place? Sixteen hundred sixty-six. In sixteen hundred sixty-six, the Great Fire of London took place. Then, who among the following is the Josserian Alexander Barclay? He is considered as the Josserian. then question number 73 which work of scottish chesterian imitates chesser's house of fame i am recalling another an extra point the house of mr biswas who can say dear student who had written it vs noipel understood so here is the question which work of scottish chesterian imitates chesser's house of films this is douglas the place of honor the glass the place of honor then let's go to the next caxton william caxton you have to know his full name william caxton printing press was set up in 1476 1476 then which is the first book in english in poetic prose mot d arthur mot d arthur is the first book in english in poetic proj then come to the next which work is considered to be the true prologue to the rensa mori utopia mori utopia which work is considered to be the true prologue to the rensa this is mori utopia then chaucer wrote romance of proj under the influence of D. Loris and D. Moyon. Chaucer wrote romance of prose under influence of D. Loris and D. Moyon. This is the correct option. Then take a glance on seventy-nine. Which war resulted in bringing Tudor rule England? Which war resulted in bringing Tudor rule rule england this is the war of rajis the war of rajis then question number 80 the travel of sir john manville the travel of sir john manville is believed to be the english translation of certain french writer whose name was jean de bourgogne i am repeating this question again the students take a glance on it once again the travel of sir john mandeville the travel of sir john mandeville is believed to be the english translation of a certain french writer what was his name 
हिज नेम वॉज जिन डी बर्गन जिन डी बर्गन डियर स्टूडेंट्स ब्रश अप योर नॉलेज ऑन विलियम शेक्सपियर एंड इन माई नेक्स्ट वीडियो आई विल प्रोवाइड यू ए लॉज पॉइंट्स ऑन विलियम शेक्सपियर एज वेल एज अदर फैक्ट्स ऑन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर विच विल हैव विच विल हैव काउंटेड इन ऑन योर सिलेबस ब्रश अप योरिक नॉलेज मग अप ऑल ऑफ दीज एंड क्रैक योर एग्जामिनेशंस थैंक्स ए लॉट